I found myself in a situation I never imagined. I was standing there, absorbing the shock of the news. I'm expecting Charles's baby, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside me. The words seemed to hang in the air, a confession that changed everything. Denise, that's impossible, came the response. You're to blame, Denise. You were too preoccupied with caring for your mom, leaving Charles all by himself. You've only got yourself to blame for this. Julie's words were harsh, her face smug, but I didn't let it shake me. Her comment about not coming back? I welcomed it. I'd be delighted not to return, I replied, my calm demeanor catching Charles and Julie off guard. Denise, how can you say that? Aren't you upset that I was unfaithful? Charles's confusion was evident. To be honest, I was taken aback at first. But anger? No, that emotion had no place here. Instead, I had made other plans. I found a new place for myself, I informed them. My words were a whisper, but they carried the weight of my newfound resolve. Unbeknownst to them, I was preparing to leave behind the life I knew with Charles, a man I could no longer trust. I'm Denise, a 39-year-old who juggles life as a housewife and a career in construction. My journey here wasn't straightforward. As a child, Julie and I were inseparable, our antics pushing the boundaries of mischief through our school years. Yet, as we grew older, our paths diverged significantly. My disdain for academia in my youth did a complete turnaround in my 20s. I threw myself into my work, gaining qualifications that propelled my career forward in my 30s. Julie, on the other hand, embraced a life of leisure through her 20s and 30s, living by the mantra of enjoying life to the fullest. Here we were, past our 35 years, each of us unmarried but leading vastly different lives. Raised by a single mother, the desire for marriage and to provide for her was strong within me. In my professional circle, options for a partner were slim, mostly married men. On a whim, I asked my boss if he knew any eligible bachelors. That's how I met Charles, a man three years my senior who inherited his parents' construction business. He was serious, dignified, and like me, had been too engrossed in work to think about marriage. But we hit it off, sharing common interests, and eventually, we decided to get married. I shared the news of my engagement with Julie, who was genuinely happy for me, despite being single herself. We made plans for her to attend the wedding, and I was overjoyed. However, the excitement of visiting Charles's childhood home, now alone since his parents' passing, was short-lived. The house was secluded at the foot of a mountain, and Charles insisted on picking me up, saying it was tricky to find. As we drove there, I couldn't help but feel a mix of anticipation and apprehension about what lay ahead. Charles seemed a bit uneasy as he mentioned his home's rural setting. It's quite secluded, so it might catch you off guard, he said, almost apologetically. I quickly reassured him, Oh, I love the serenity of the countryside more than the hustle and bustle of the city. I'm looking forward to it. My attempt to lighten the mood only resulted in a non-committal murmur from Charles, who seemed worried that I might be setting my expectations too high. However, the mere thought of visiting the place where the person I cherished lived filled me with immense joy. Our journey took us over an hour, venturing into a neighboring county and then into a dense bamboo grove that bore no resemblance to the tranquil countryside I had envisioned. Eventually, we arrived at a place that felt more abandoned than inhabited. We're here. This is my house, Charles announced, parking in what looked more like a rundown garage than a driveway. Before us stood a house that seemed to whisper tales from over a century ago. Yes, this is where I live. It's quite old but solidly built, Charles explained, noticing my speechless reaction as I surveyed the vast property and its quaint, wooden, single-story structure. Naively, I had assumed we'd find a new place together after marrying, but Charles's next words caught me off guard. Come on in. This will be our home, so make yourself comfortable, he said, implying a permanence I hadn't anticipated. We're going to live here after we get married? I asked, barely concealing my astonishment. The house was not only ancient, but also a considerable distance from my workplace. Charles suggested I could quit my job since his income was sufficient for both of us. This revelation was unexpected. We had discussed our careers previously, but he had never hinted at wanting me to resign once married. But I love my work. Why would you assume I'd quit without discussing it first? I inquired, bewildered. Charles's response revealed a traditional mindset I hadn't anticipated, expecting me to embrace a domestic role without question, much like his mother had. The house's distance from my current life, including my job and family, added to my reluctance. Moreover, the house itself, while sturdy for its age, showed signs of neglect with crumbling walls, creaky floors, 
and outdated amenities, making me question our future in such a place. Charles noticed my concern and attempted to comfort me, praising the charm of traditional homes and assuring me I'd grow to love them. Yet, I couldn't shake off my apprehensions. For the moment, I held back my objections, asking instead to be taken back home as it was getting late. Charles offhandedly suggested I stay the night, but my mind was too troubled to consider it. That night, as I lay in bed, I pondered our situation. Even if we started in Charles's ancestral home, we could always move later on. With my savings and Charles's resources, building a new home could be within our reach. This thought offered a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty. On my next day off, I decided it was time to bring up the subject of moving to a new home with Charles. I had hoped he would be open to the idea, considering my commute to work and the distance from my family. However, Charles didn't share my enthusiasm. To him, the idea of leaving a house that was already ours seemed unnecessary. Why to move when we have a house? He questioned, clearly not understanding my concerns about convenience. This response left me feeling frustrated, yet it didn't change how I felt about Charles. We continued with our wedding plans. Our wedding was a lavish affair, befitting the owner of a construction company. Julie, ever so vibrant and youthful, was there, drawing attention and even a compliment from Charles, which sparked a fleeting sense of jealousy in me despite being the bride. The ceremony was beautiful, and we embarked on our married life together. Settling into Charles's ancestral home, I eventually left my job, a decision that didn't sit well with me, but I was determined to make the best of our new life together. Then, one day, an urgent call from the hospital changed everything. My mother had fallen ill suddenly and needed to be hospitalized for a long term. I rushed to her side, feeling a whirlwind of emotions as I faced her weakened state. Despite the severity of her condition, Charles's reaction was dismissively casual. Oh, take your time. His indifference is stung, especially given the circumstances. His lack of concern, masked by annoyance yet my visible upset, left me feeling more isolated. For five months, I stayed close to my mom, her condition unchanged, requiring my constant care. During this time, Charles's absence was notable. Not once did he visit, perhaps still upset over our last interaction. This thought seemed petty to me. My mom, ever selfless, suggested I visit home, worrying about Charles and me. But my visits home were brief and strained. Charles and I barely spoke, and I felt increasingly unnecessary there. One night, amidst these troubling thoughts, I received a call from Julie. It had been a while since we last spoke, and her voice was a welcome sound. Yet, there was a hesitancy in her tone that made me pause. Hey, when are you coming back home next? She asked, surprising me since I hadn't mentioned my situation to her. Curious about her inquiry and grateful for the connection, I engaged in the conversation, even as a sense of heaviness lingered between us. I responded calmly to Julie's sudden call. Hey, Julie, is everything okay? Did you need something specific? Her answer was casual. No, just wanted to hear your voice. Our conversation was abruptly cut short by a male voice in the background, prompting Julie to hastily end the call. That voice sent a shiver down my spine, igniting a suspicion I couldn't ignore. It had been months since my regular visits home had ceased, driven by the need to care for my ailing mother. The unsettling feeling from the call compelled me to return home the following day. Arriving on a Sunday, I expected Charles to be there. But instead, a bright red sports car I faintly recognized took the place of my own in the garage. As I stepped inside, a pair of stylish high heels at the entrance seemed to confirm my suspicions. Charles, are you here? I called out. Charles's surprised face greeted me. His reaction to my sudden appearance laced with unease. The presence of Julie's belongings was unmistakable. Trying to maintain a facade, Charles fumbled for an explanation as Julie donned a simple yet unusual outfit for her and stepped forward, her demeanor resolute. Without hesitation, Julie revealed her pregnancy, boldly stating she was carrying Charles's child. Charles's downcast look suggested he had hoped for a less confrontational revelation. Julie, seizing the moment, blamed me for the situation, attributing her proximity to Charles as a consequence of my absence. Her triumphant stance, however, didn't rattle me. Charles, perhaps feeling supported by Julie's confidence, openly admitted his attraction to her since our wedding, suggesting it was time for me to leave. Julie, too, shared that Charles had reached out to her, playing on his narrative of my supposed disinterest in returning. Amidst their justification, I remained composed, my reaction leaving them bewildered. 
To their astonishment, I welcomed the idea of leaving, revealing that I had been considering moving out for some time. The thought of raising a family in such a remote location had prompted me to look for a new home, a detail that seemed to escape Julie until now. Charles and Julie were taken aback by my calm acceptance and plans for the future, unable to comprehend my lack of anger towards their betrayal. At that moment, I realized that moving forward was not only possible but necessary, leaving behind a situation that no longer served me. When Charles disclosed the pregnancy without consulting me, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of disbelief and resignation. You never thought to discuss such a significant matter with me, I pointed out, despite already knowing the answer. Charles, seemingly oblivious to the gravity of his actions, couldn't understand why his affair and its consequence meant we couldn't continue as a couple. You've made your choice, Charles. Stay here with Julie. You have the means to manage, even if it means driving your child to a far-off private school each day, I said, my tone even but firm, revealing my decision to part ways. Charles seemed to grasp the situation as I explained, while Julie, taken aback by my composed acceptance, questioned my reaction. I've lost my trust in Charles, I admitted. He never supported my mother during her hospitalization. I've decided to move in with her, arranging for home nursing care. It's a fresh start for us. Charles, still self-centered, wondered if I harbored any resentment or plans for revenge. Don't worry, I reassured him with a small smile. I believe in karma. What goes around comes around. Soon after, Charles and I finalized our divorce, and I moved into a new, accessible home with my mother, ensuring she had the care and proximity to the hospital she needed. Meanwhile, Charles and Julie embarked on their new life together in the old house. However, the absence of nearby medical facilities proved challenging, especially with Julie's pregnancy requiring them to travel extensively for routine checkups. The day came when Charles reached out to me, confused about why they had to vacate the house. It turned out Charles had forgotten a crucial detail. The house belonged to his uncle, a fact I was aware of from our earlier conversations with Charles's relatives. Charles's father had entrusted the property to his brother, doubting Charles's reliability. Charles's ignorance of this arrangement came to light when his uncle announced plans to sell the land, a decision that took Charles by surprise, but one I had anticipated. Charles's situation worsened when he revealed his demotion and salary cut, the consequences of his uncle's lack of confidence in his leadership abilities. Julie's reaction to their changing fortunes, particularly her dashed dreams of renovating the house into a mansion, highlighted the tensions between them. Through it all, I found a sense of peace and vindication, knowing that my decision to move on was justified. Charles and Julie were left to navigate the consequences of their actions, while I focused on providing a comfortable and supportive environment for my mother. When Charles called me, his voice trembling with uncertainty and fear, it was evident that the revelation about the house and his salary cut had hit hard. What am I supposed to do now? He asked, sounding desperate. It was clear from his tone and the situation that Julie's interest in him was largely financial. I'm sorry, Charles, but you're on your own with this one. You'll need to figure it out, I told him, firm in my decision to not get involved further. Charles tried to protest, but I had already moved on, ending the call without hesitation. Shortly after, Julie called. I hesitated to answer, anticipating the onslaught of complaints and accusations. However, knowing her persistent nature, I answered. Julie's accusations flew immediately, blaming me for her disillusionment with Charles's financial situation. It's not my problem anymore. Charles is still a good man, and he's not without a job. I responded calmly. Julie's frustration was palpable, as she accused me of withholding information about the house. Even if I had told you, what would you have done? Left Charles before starting your family, I countered. Julie fell silent, unable to argue. I advised Julie to focus on her family, emphasizing that they needed to support each other now more than ever. With that, I ended the call feeling detached from the whole saga with Charles. Years later, Charles, Julie, and their child showed up unexpectedly at my new home. They had managed to track me down, a fact that surprised me. Julie announced they were in the area for their child's kindergarten admission results and decided to visit. Her tone was boastful as she shared the news of their child's acceptance into a prestigious kindergarten, clearly seeking validation. I responded with feigned interest, which only seemed to irk Julie further. Her pride in their child's achievements and Charles' silent presence made for an uncomfortable reunion. Julie's attempt to belittle my lifestyle by highlighting their success and inquiring about my knowledge of kindergartens 
backfired spectacularly when I revealed that I had remarried. The shock on their faces was evident as my husband Scott entered the room. Scott, recognizing them from the kindergarten interview, introduced himself as the principal of Wilson Kindergarten. The realization that they were standing in the home of the principal and that I was now happily remarried left Charles and Julie speechless. Their visit, intended to flaunt their status, ended in a humbling realization of their misunderstanding of my life. Scott, ever the gracious host, invited them in, but the dynamic had shifted. The encounter served as a closure for me, reinforcing that moving on from Charles was the best decision I had ever made. Discovering that Scott was the principal of the prestigious kindergarten left Charles and Julie speechless. Yes, I'm indeed the principal, and Dennessy is my wife, Scott confirmed to their astonishment. Julie, unable to hide her disbelief, questioned how I could have married someone of Scott's stature. Her skepticism reflected her underestimation of me, but I had transformed significantly from my past self, no longer the person Julie once looked down upon. Our paths crossed professionally. My company was responsible for the renovation of the kindergarten. Scott was drawn to my dedication and work ethic, marking the beginning of our relationship. When introducing Charles and Julie to Scott, I couldn't resist mentioning their tangled connection to me, which made them visibly uncomfortable, especially in front of their child and the principal of the kindergarten they hoped their son would attend. Faced with the potential impact of their familial situation on their son's admission, Julie anxiously inquired about its status. Scott, after a moment of contemplation, assured them that their son's performance in the kindergarten would be the deciding factor. This response brought Charles and Julie a sigh of relief, albeit their understanding of the kindergarten's environment remained naive. Their lack of awareness soon led to unforeseen challenges. The kindergarten community was tight-knit, with strong parental involvement, and rumors about Julie's relationship with Charles spread rapidly. This gossip not only isolated Charles and Julie from other parents, but also affected their son, Michael, leading to his distress and eventual withdrawal from kindergarten. The family's struggles continued, prompting them to move Michael to a public kindergarten, where the rumors followed further tarnishing their standing in the community. In time, Julie's parents stepped in, taking an active role in Michael's upbringing, allowing him to attend kindergarten without the burden of his parents' past actions. They even approached me to apologize for everything that had transpired, revealing that Charles and Julie had separated and that Julie was living with them, rejected by her son. Amidst these developments, Scott and I welcomed our daughter into the world, and I found a new circle of friends among local mothers. Scott taking paternity leave proved to be an exceptional father. This new chapter of my life was filled with happiness and love, far removed from the turmoil of the past. Surrounded by supportive friends and family, I was determined to provide my daughter with all the love and care she deserved, embodying the strength and love that my mother showed me. My commitment to living a fulfilling life rooted in love and trust had never been stronger.